This interview with Robert Barrett of Grand Rapids, Michigan is being conducted by Deb Moore of the Grand Valley State University's Veterans History Project. Today is September 1st, 2015. Well, thanks for talking to me today, Bob. Um, why don't you start out telling us a little bit about where you were born, when you were born, about your family. Oh, sure. I was born in Zanesville, uh, Ohio in 1925. And uh, uh, we lived in Zanesville for uh, until I was about eight or nine years old. And then we went to uh, Columbus, Ohio, uh, where my grandmother had been living for some time. And we kind of uh, made our home there for quite a few years. And uh, uh, so then I went to, uh, I finished uh, grade school, not grade school, but uh, high school uh, there. And then we went to Michigan, to Michigan, Michigan. And that's where we settled down. That's where my mother and her brothers were uh, born in that area. As far as I can, I remember. Uh, uh, Did your dad get a job in Muskegon? Uh, my dad was a fireman in, uh, fire, uh, uh, in Muskegon. Okay. In uh, Zanesville. Okay. And then uh, uh, he left when I was around six, seven years old. He uh -huh. left the family. Oh. And then uh, that that's, was one of the reasons we moved to Columbus. Okay. So then, uh, after we got to Columbus, we uh, I, I did a lot of schooling there, and I did sports uh, there. And then uh, my uh, grandmother would like wanted to move back to uh, Muskegon, Michigan, where uh, she had grown up and uh, had family there and so on. So we went there, and then that, that's really where uh, I finished school. Uh, up to a certain point, I, I did leave school when, when I was in the twelfth uh, uh, grade, and I joined the Navy. And uh, okay, let's stop there for a minute. Did you have any siblings? Not then. Just you and your mother. And did your what did your mother do? Um, she had a job. Uh, yes, yeah, she uh, in, in in Columbus. She opened up a restaurant. Oh. And she had a restaurant there. Uh, and she run it by her, pretty much by herself, and then of course I, I helped her uh, at, at uh, dinner time and so on and so forth, washing dishes so she could keep up with uh, uh, serving people. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, so, so that that went uh, real well. And then uh, um, so you were going to Muskegon High School. Yes, I was in Muskegon High School. Okay, but you said you quit in di uh, junior year, in 11th grade? Yes, and uh, that was in Muskegon. Uh -huh. And it happened to be one morning when uh, I wasn't feeling well, so I was I stayed home from school, uh -huh. and I was uh, still laying on the couch. And I just told Mother, I said, Mother, I'm going to go join the Navy. Uh, and so uh, she didn't say nothing at that time. So in, when I, the next day I believe it was, I felt better. So I drove to Grand Rapids around Reeds Lake. Uh, uh, there was a uh, recruiting? Navy recruiting office. Okay. And so I walked in, I am not knowing. I was 17 years old at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I uh, told him I'd like to join the Navy, so they asked me a couple questions and uh, gave me a real fast physical and the outcome of it that they says, well you, this was like on a Tuesday or Wednesday of, of the week and when I did this, and so at that, I think it was Wednesday when I was getting interviewed with him, he says, okay, you go back out to Muskegon, get two teeth filled, and come back Monday ready to go. So that only gave me about five days, four or five days to prepare myself. Uh -huh. And so I did. I went and got uh, 
And the dentist, I remember, asked me, which ones would you... I said, I just don't care as long as you feel two of the teeth that need to be... The dentist good. couldn't tell what was wrong with them? No. Which ones needed filling? Yeah, well, he could tell if they were broken or cavities or something of that nature. I, I didn't tell him which ones they were. I, I, I had teeth and they That's didn't That's his hurt. job, yeah. Yeah, but the, so... so uh, that, that's what went on that, and so um, Monday, uh, my mother and stepfather took me over to Muskegon, over to uh, Grand Rapids again, and got me on the uh, the bus to take me to uh, uh, Detroit, Michigan, to get me sworn in into the Navy. So that's how that went about. Okay. So then the, uh, the next day, uh, the, in fact, in that group that I was assigned to in Detroit, there must have been uh, 20, 25 guys like myself that had decided to join. And uh, so then we, were, we were all went on the same boat. So then they put us in the hotel that night, and the next morning they put us on a bus and took us to uh, Great Lakes, uh, over to Chicago, and then up to, so that's where we got assigned to boot camp, was in uh, uh, Great Lakes. Okay, tell me about boot camp, what was that like? Oh, that was a very, uh, so when we got there, we, uh, uh, it was just a young children, young men or something, that we uh, uh, were put into uh, a, a different, Categories and the first I remember going in one where the, you had to change your clothes and so it was going to a uh, uh, an auditorium of some sort and, and on the floor was like a two foot square and that's where each one of us stood we had our own square and in that box right next to our square was a was a cardboard box and they told us to take all our clothes off and put them in that box we won't be needing them. And so that's what we did. And then you felt like, my goodness, here I am, I know clothes and those. It's a kind of, kind of a funny feeling. So then they run us, I we didn't realize it, but we were, we were right next to where you get uh, small stores, that's what they call, where you get clothes or whatever. Yeah. So we went in, went in there and they would write on, write on your forehead, you have a seven, three eighths or seven, uh, eighth hat. And on your neck is a 15 or 14, and same way, uh, all the way down to you. And then they went through the line, and, and the guy would look at the numbers that was on your body, and then he would give you that size. Uniform. Uniform. And so when we got our uniform, we put them on, and we were outside waiting for the rest of the fellows to get there. To, and some of them come out that was really funny. Some are, the, the sleeves were way too short, some they were way too long, some of them the hat came down over their ears, and, and it was not all like that, but uh, there was some that was really comical, comical that's <laughs> right. So then we were assigned to a barracks. Okay, wait, tell me, did you get, how many uniforms did you get? Was there like a dress uniform and an everyday uniform, or? Yeah, we got a, a set of whites, that's white uniform, and we got a set of blues, and then we got a uh, uh, t-shirts and underwear and socks and a pair of shoes. Okay. And then we... Uh, and a couple of hats. A hat to go yeah, with the whites and the blues. Yeah, and, and that all came uh, and we had to uh, put them in a, um, a sea bag. Okay. A certain way. They had to go in and they had to be folded a certain way. Mm -hmm. You couldn't fold them. Most of the stuff had to be rolled. So it didn't leave. Uh, and then they gave you what they call a ditty bag. And then that ditty bag was your your uh, toilet essentials, your toothpaste, your toiletries. Yeah, whatever you would need to get prepared for the morning. And uh, so then they assigned us. Uh, to a barracks, we went in this barracks, and then we were assigned to a, a bunk, and the bunks were, the place was nice and clean, and uh, uh, 
you didn't mind staying. So we we were assigned a bunk, and uh, and when it, whatever bunk you had, sometimes it was a upper bunk, sometimes it was a lower bunk, whatever. And uh, so I was assigned to a certain number of booths. I don't remember, but it uh, it happened to be a an upper bunk, which I thought was a lot because you could you had a lot more room. You know, to see uh, mm -hmm. the ceilings were quite high, so. Mm -hmm. But being in a lower bunk, you were confined to. So you were pleased with that. Yeah. So what? What did you think about the um, the physical requirements at boot camp? Did you do okay? Yeah, uh, it, it did well. Did real well. The only thing uh, I, I should have there was. Uh, these teeth that I referred to, for, uh, that they told me to have filled, they took us during the physical time to a dentist where we all went in and there was a, a big line of dentists and they took us in and this dentist drilled out them. <laughs> that you <laughs> just got. Yeah, I had just got. So uh, that was a little bit of humor along the line. And then uh, there were some other fellows that their teeth were much, much worse than what uh, some of us had. Uh -huh. So they put the, they pulled all their teeth right there, <gasps> right now. Oh. And so they, uh, they had a tough time. So that night in the barracks, uh, they brought in a lot of uh, uh, extra pillows with rubber things, and uh, so then they, they, they made that what they call a dental company. So us fellows that didn't have that problem, they moved us to another company, and so but the so I know I don't know whatever happened to uh, these fellows that had all their teeth filled. I'm I'm sure they got them new teeth and where they went I don't know, but then we uh, <coughs> this boot camp company that we were assigned to was was uh, one that I liked real well. Uh, there was a big, uh, a, a big barracks, and it had the same uh, uh, bunks and all that sort of thing. And down in the middle of the bunks was uh, like uh, tables. They were uh, like picnic tables, very nice ones. And that's where uh, uh, we did our leisurely stuff at night, okay. you know, writing letters or whatever you wanted to do. Okay. And then at certain times, I can't remember the times, uh, we would line up uh, for chow, chow down, and we'd go, we'd go to a, mm -hmm. uh, a place where they, we had certain times and certain ones. and So everything was organized from that standpoint, very good. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then when we come back, the, the, the floors in these barracks were very, very nice, and they were hardwood, and they were had a nice finish on it. But the shoes that we had had uh, uh, black heels, and they would leave marks on oh, the yeah. floor. So at a certain times at night, we'd all uh, get a piece of steel wool, we'd put it under our feet, and shuffle along the floor, <laughs> and that would uh, remove the things. Nice. Well, that was interesting. Yeah, so fun. it came right off real, real easy. And then we swept it up, and and uh, and then uh, we, we pretty much got ourselves ready for uh, to go to bed. And uh, then the lights would go out. And I think it was around nine o'clock. And, uh, and sometimes uh, this was in June uh, of uh, 1943, and it was some. It was a little. Laid out yet when we went to went to in our bunk, and sometimes you couldn't go to sleep right away. And if you start talking, and, and uh, they would ask you not to talk, and then they would take it and say and tell you, "Don't talk." And if you did talk, we were going to go out at twelve o'clock and, and march. And so that this we never had to do that. We always <laughs> so. But you could hear other ones out there at night that didn't quit talking, and they were out marching. Though. Okay. But uh, our our CEO that we had, 
we called him uh, Sir and all that, and saluted him. But he actually was a, uh, uh, a chief petty officer. He wasn't a, and they used him as the, as your, your commander. So then he was a, a go hard guy, and he liked to win everything. And he was a, uh, what I mean is contests that we had as far as marching and all, and things like that. So we did, and we had a group of guys that uh, uh, kind of felt the same way. We like to do that too. So when they assigned us to certain positions in the different platoons, one platoon, first platoon, second platoon, and they take a short people like like my, myself, and they have another guy, and they put us right on the front of the of the platoon. And one on the just the left edge, the other one on the right edge, and we were the ones that that uh, controlled uh, the steps that the the rest of the because there were some big big fellows there, and they could take bigger steps if they didn't have somebody like us to pace them. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. we did that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That'd be good. Then. And, uh, so so we had a, a good time, but actually we got. Uh, uh, for that, we uh, we got a uh, a little arm. Uh, 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 it was like a arm band type thing. They saw it, mm -hmm. showing us that we had we did something that uh, other than just march. Okay. So then we would go different places and uh, and, uh, and get part of the training of uh, that you need to get. Uh, to be in the Navy, like uh, uh, we did swimming, and we did uh, uh, one of them I remember was uh, late in the day. We had, we went into a place where they they froze it up, and then they put in some mustard gas, and we we, had, we went in with uh, with gas masks, and then the, the gas was turned on, and then while the gas was still coming, they, we were instructed to put our gas mask on and uh, so then we just stood there for so many minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, I can't remember. <clears throat> and then it happened to be uh, just before lunchtime. And so uh, the, the instructions said, so take your mask off and uh, exit the door so and so forth. So we did that, but when you take the mask off, uh, your eyes start watering and you coughed and so on and so forth. So everybody got out doors eventually and we all was coughing and sneezing and doing that thing. And then we went right, got back to our barracks and we had our lunch. And there were some, some fellows that just didn't want to eat. They didn't, uh, the, the, the gas bothered them more than, it didn't seem to bother me too much except made my eyes water quite a bit. And they water some of the part of the afternoon too. So then I can't remember. Well, then also during the day, uh, there, you might get an order <coughs> to change uniforms. You might be in uh, dungarees and a blue shirt, uh, and then all of a sudden there'll be a change of uniforms. So they take you back to your barracks and you put a set of white side or white uniform, and then the, that happened oh maybe we were there two months or maybe four or five times that we had to do something like that mm -hmm. and there was times where you changed from uh, dungarees to whites and then it could be 15 minutes later they say change the blues mm -hmm. and it was just and then you then you go back and check your <coughs> sea bag and the stuff you just took off had to be put in the sea bag mm -hmm. very neat and it's, just like your what you couldn't just throw it up on your bunk and, and go get it later. It wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. When you had something, you, you kept your your bunk and your sea bag and uh -huh. did you go. Uh, okay. What? Well, tell me now, Bob. So when you finished uh, basic training, then what happened? Where'd you go next? But then uh, we we got a seven day leave, and we was able to go home for seven days. Mm -hmm. Then we went back to Great Lakes, and they assigned us to different areas uh, and then they signed us to uh, 
Where were you assigned? Huh? Where where did they assign you? They assigned me to Gulfport, Mississippi. Okay. And that was to gunnery school. Okay. And so we were there for 30 days. And not everybody on the barracks went there. Some went other sure, places. but you went to gunnery school. But I was in the group that went to uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, at gunnery mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. And we did various uh, uh, things with guns. We had we took some of them apart. They were these were handguns uh, and rifles, and we take them apart and have to learn to put them back together. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was uh, uh, times where we, we got on a, a, a bus and we went out to Lake Michigan, and we actually shoot these twenty millimeters. At a flag that a, 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 a airplane was pulling. Okay. Just to, and then uh, a lot of these were you had to learn to targets. You were shooting at targets. And, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, you, you had, uh, and you were strapped into this twenty millimeter, and you could stoop way down or way up and swivel. And you also had one of the fellows uh, would keep putting. Uh, uh, your 20 millimeter gun had a uh, an ammunition. Okay. I can't. I'll, I'll check it. I'm trying to take out a name. It was an ammunition uh, with the with the shells in it, and you put it on, and when they were gone, he took he took this off and put a new one on with new shells. In okay. It. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm lost for words on That's that. okay. But then, uh, so then we go back and then we're, we do various things with uh, uh, with guns and uh, then we we go to a dry or ray, uh, to a, a range and, and we shoot shoot the, uh, the small arms and see how good we were and so on and they kept track of the ones that were better shots. And so then it come time to leave and we we went to. Uh, uh, New Orleans, and as a group, and then we called our names, and we went over and was assigned to uh, different places. And I happened to be pulled, and I went over, and they put me as an armed guard, which uh, uh, there was, I don't know where the other guys came from, but there was five of us assigned to a ship in New Orleans, and it happened to be a uh, merchant marine ship. Okay. So it was, uh, so we were the f only five American people on that ship. Uh, and we manned the guns. And there was always just a few guns on it. It wasn't ready for combat by any means. But they weren't Americans? No, they were, we're saying that by the Panamanian flag. Oh, okay. So, so the name of that ship was Alcibiades. And so we we did that. We run coastwise in the Gulf of Mexico various times, okay. taking oil from uh, from Florida to uh, Texas and different mm -hmm. all in that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then uh, uh, it was time to leave and go to uh, do something else. Mm -hmm. So the area assigned us to go to the South Pacific. So one day we took off from, we didn't know where we were going, but we end up... Uh, took off from New Orleans? Uh, no, no, we didn't go back to New Orleans, we went over to Cuba. Okay. But, and, and, and the Cuba, and we was on this merchant marine ship with us, us five gunners, and they had small guns on 50 millimeters and stuff, and of course we, we used them in gunner school, but not like the 20 millimeter. But we, uh, Anyhow, we went down, we went to into Cuba, we spent, it happened to be Christmas Eve, we were in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, that's all. And I remember sitting, sitting the land on the deck, Christmas Eve, listening to the Christmas carols on the shore. This was Christmas Eve, 1943? Yes. Okay. And then, uh, so then uh, I think it was the next day or the next day, we headed for the Panama Canal. And so we got to the, uh, but when you go out of the harbors or go into a harbor, there's normally protection out there or something, because that's a great place for submarines to 
just sit out there waiting for ships to come out. So they made pretty sure that there wasn't. And tankers, they pretty well protected anyhow because they needed that oil mm -hmm. that we could. So we went to Panama Canal and I went all the way over and went to uh, <coughs> Brisbane, Australia. So we spent a few days there and didn't do too much uh, that, we're, that I know of be, because I was just a, a seaman and I didn't know about the other stuff. So then uh, a day or so we went up to New Guinea and we started out in the lower end of New Guinea which is I think it was called uh, uh, Buna, it was something like Buna, it wasn't Buna. Uh, and then, uh, uh, then as things got a little better, we moved up until we got up to Finch Haven and, and uh, Buna, was, no, no, there were another part. Uh, I can't remember the name, but a couple mm -hmm. more ports up there. Okay. And then we went, to, we, we did that for quite a while. Then we go out to sea there and refuel ships that didn't come into the into the I see. Uh -huh. and so we refueled them and we were we were sent so that we could do that. Now that's the best of my knowledge on that part of it. I were you still on the merchant marine ship? Yes. Okay. So then it wasn't much longer than that. They sent our ship back to uh, Australia, the Brisbane again. And they changed it from Alcibiades and put it in a Navy ship as USS Andrew Dora. Okay. But it was the same ship as the uh, Alcibiades, except now we had 12, I think, 20 millimeter guns. We had bigger guns on the forward and aft. And uh, so we, we were well armed compared to what we were before. Okay. So then uh, the Merchant Marines were sent home and I got a whole new batch of Navy men come in from various parts of the country and so we had a ship and we got, uh, our, our new, we got a new captain and, and the officers, uh, the executive officers and so on. But then we went north again and we started uh, <coughs> uh, up in uh, uh, New Guinea, we stopped there. And then we, would, we spent a lot of time going farther up and north, and, and then uh, I'm not just exactly what we did up, but we, we didn't go to uh, uh, the uh, Philippines yet. We didn't go that far, but we was doing Were you patrolling, or you were still refueling ships, or no, what we were you doing? Refueling ships. Refueling ships, yeah, we okay. We were always doing something. We wanted to, just bombing around, we had right. <laughs> you had your purpose. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we just spent quite a, quite a time up in that area, and that was when they decided we should go to we could go to rest camp, and so we went. We was going. To, that's where we grew the beards, and we went. We was on our way to uh, uh, Brisbane again. And we got a call to go to Thursday Islands and pick up a load of oil and take it to some place. And uh, there goes our rest camp thing. So, so that's what we did. And uh, we went, uh, and then we did that. Then they put us right back on the route back down to uh, Brisbane. And so we went right straight to Brisbane. And we, we pulled in Brisbane and then uh, it was late in the afternoon, and they put us up. Uh, and it wasn't everybody on the ship did me, it was just some of us that had been on there a, a good length of time. The whole crew didn't go. So we, we uh, when we pulled into uh, where we were going to stay at Coolangala, Australia, which was about 50 miles north of Brisbane, we pulled in there, and it was, uh, and we could see uh, uh, the, uh, oh gosh, anyhow, we thought, oh, oh we're going to have, uh, we're going to be doing KP, we're going to be doing this and doing that. And uh, so they got us off, and we had our sea bags and ditty bags, and we all, all uh, were signed, we had little cabins 
they were just little bitty things, mm -hmm. but it, it was fun. Because mm -hmm. uh, you each got your own? Huh? You each got your own cabin? No. No. They signed them to it. Uh -huh. And uh, so, so we got there, and then we just took down our gear and uh, went back to where you eat. What's they call them things? The mess? Yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> mess hall, KP, um, I don't know, the dining hall? Dining hall. Okay. So we went back there, and to our surprise, we had one of the nicest dinners that we had had in a long time. Good. So then we were assigned to go back to our bunk, and, and, uh, and we had a little better uh, time. You could stay up later. Uh, so you didn't have to go to bed at 8 or 9 o'clock like we did. So then we went, and it was some nights, and I think maybe it was every night, or we could go ashore, but we were ashore. We just, we could go out on Liberty, and there were different places where they, they were having dances and, and so on. So that was fun. And then, and then uh, we, we come back, and then the, the next morning you could stay in bed as long as you wanted. And then uh, get up and go have breakfast, and uh, you you nice. didn't sign anything. You were pretty much that was your little vacation, your R and R. Rest camp, and then that's where some of us guys went and got our beard shaved off. And, oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Got our, uh, uh huh. Here, show, sh hold up the picture for the camera with you with your beard. Okay, I uh, find uh, this is this is a, like the morning when we woke up. We still had our beards, uh -huh. and so we decided. Well, we we did what we decided to do, and now uh, it's time to get them uh, shaved. shaved off. And then uh, uh, I think I've got some more pictures. Now, now this is a, uh, the group pretty much that had them. Uh, okay, that's who you were at rest camp with and you had your beard shaved. Yeah, okay. and then uh, there's a couple of guys that uh, didn't have their beard shaved off, they wanted to keep them uh -huh. after they liked them so much. Okay. So, <laughs> and then, so there was some various other pictures uh, okay. uh, that a couple of us had. To, and then, uh, I don't know if it was that very day or not, but the, then we went ashore, uh, uh, I guess that's, okay. I can't show the pictures. We went ashore and went, kind of went shopping, just walking down the the street and somebody took our picture and I can't seem to locate it right now. And uh, um, okay, we should we should move in and uh, you know move forward, Bob. Okay. Um, so after leave, then you continued on the Andrew Doria, mm -hmm. um, supplying fuel to ships yeah. and and um, did you have a uh, were you quite skilled with the guns? Did you have to use them at all? Just when there was. Uh, we had a lot of GQs, that's general quarters, but, but we were we were refueling different ships, and we also were doing we'd go up the coast of uh, the Philippines, and we'd go in to get our uh, uh, get our orders for the captain. He had to do this or go there, mm -hmm. ship refuel these ships are going to be here and there. So he got his instructions too. So then. Uh, we, we got uh, orders that we were going to possibly get into some other uh, duties, so they sent us to Leyte. That was the southern part of Leyte. Leyte. Yeah, that's where they hadn't taken that completely yet. Southern part of what? Uh, the Philippines. Okay. And uh, so when we got, uh, it, it was, uh, we kind of looked look forward to it because we were going to get into something that was, and yet again it was in the back of your mind, God, I think it's shock. It's kind of scary, but yeah. exciting. So when we got up there uh, and we pulled in, it was spooky, it was dark, and and, and we happened to get there uh, at, at dusk, and as soon as we got into late day, or, uh, I'm not sure, it was right next to late day anyhow. And I lowered the boat and took Captain in to get his orders, what he was going to do from there. So we went in, and uh, so it, all the ships that was in the harbor, they 
also was protecting anything that moved in the water. They were patrolling their decks with uh, uh, machine guns or some sort of artillery, and anything that came by, they, they shot it. They shot it. So the, the captain came back, and he was there a little bit longer than what we thought. And so when he came back, it was getting close to dark. It was really, and so in a harbor. You don't really know where your ship is. I mean, because there's so many ships there, and you're leaving from this place, and you first, you first. So I, I was a, I was a coxswain on the boat, so I was very careful uh, going up through there and asking. Uh, uh, we're looking for Andrew Doria. We're looking, and uh, it, we'll be on. Keep we'll going. Just, sure, one or the other. So we we spent time looking for and then finally one uh, one ship did uh, did you just come in around so and so yeah that was that's why I think you're about two ships or two things now so sure enough we found it boy were we happy to get, to get <laughs> off of that boat I bet so then we got on and uh, unloaded it and he had his orders we and uh, we uh, when you when you're in the harbor or in the harbor and your uh, your lifeboats and everything are uh, inboard of the on the ship, the only time they put the lifeboats out is when you go to sea. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything was in when we weren't uh, uh, looking for looking to go anywhere, and uh, so I can't remember. Well, we did move. Yeah, I take that back. We did move around in the harbor at different. Uh, uh, Anchorages and, and refueled ships. Instead of them coming to us, we went to them. Of uh, course, some of the ships were pretty good size. The, the Phoenix was there, and the Tennessee, and some other large carriers and so on. So then, it come time to form a convoy to uh, to go into this. I call it an invasion, which is just north of north of Manila, uh, several hundred miles. Like this, I don't know if it. T I thought it was the uh, Legayan Gulf. I thought that was the name of the uh, place where we get in with the. So then uh, we did. We started got the convoy assembled, and then we went uh, up towards. Uh, a Kulangala, I think that's the not to Kulangala. Uh, I forgot the name. Okay, um, but you're you're north of Manila. Yeah. Okay. Several hundred miles. North. Seven hundred miles. Okay. And then uh, we uh, we we turned in to go into the bay and into the landing, and uh, as we went going north, we had we zigzagged a little bit. And then at night we had uh, we had a lot of GQs at night where we uh, they were nuisance type where planes would come in just in sight in our uh, in our radar uh, view and then they'd, they'd leave and so that got everybody up and and, and those were Japanese they were, yeah mm -hmm. and, and that was a nuisance type thing and then it get settled down and they do it again but anyhow. Uh, the next day at about noon, uh, I had just got, I had the uh, eight to eight to twelve watch. And this was eight in the morning till twelve noon. So I had lunch and I came back. I had some clothes I was putting in the locker that I just washed, and bang, the GQ went off. And so I run to the back and I was running to. I had a uh, I was stationed at the on the three inch gun on the aft. It was just the yeah, part of the boat, a ship. And so as I was running back there, I could see a ship just back of us. It had a kamikaze that had hit it. And uh, so we, we were, we knew we were going to see some action. So I don't, we got up there, we all had our our duties to do, and we were we were ready to fire. We, and so then these, these planes, there was, Five, six, something like that. Um, they stayed just 
after us, and they wouldn't. They were just out of all the uh, uh, range range for firing at them, and they just circled around up there pretty much all afternoon, and of course keep an eye on them and stuff. So then we all was very uh, on GQ all afternoon, and then it got to the point where we had to take some of them had to take breaks. And, you know, go to the bathroom and get something. So it was just about time with, uh, about, I don't know, five, six o'clock, uh, they started coming in. And uh, right next to us, uh, there was LSTs. And these LSTs uh, had troops on them. And uh, we was at the rear of the convoy, and these, tri these troops were right next to it. And the reason we was at the rear of the convoy is because the, the uh, escorts would come alongside that was escorting us and get fuel and then they'd go back out and do it. And then another, another one come in. So we kept doing that. So we were kept pretty pretty busy all all the time we were in that. And then so these these common these kamikazes come in and wow, they were coming. And so it, uh, we fired and fired, and everybody fired, and they were, I, I could look over and I could see these got these troops on the LSTs were jumping overboard mm -hmm. because they just looked like they were going to get hit. And the ones that jumped in, of course, they got busy doing things on us. But there happened to be a pontoon or a, a PT squadron in back of us following mm -hmm. us in. And, and this PT squadron picked up a lot of these guys that went jumped overboard. So then it was getting dark. And so they were, then at certain times, uh, they were, you were supposed to change courses. The whole convoy would change courses. Okay. And of course our ship was an old ship and it had trouble going much more than eight knots. Eight, nine knots. And we were, it was dark. and. And this was the 8 to 12 watch, and of course I was on the wheel again. And it was dark, real dark, and all of a sudden no one reported it, but there was a ship pulled right along, pretty, the satellite was right close to it. It says, Andrew Doria, you're, 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 you're losing, you're tailing back, we can't stay with you much longer. And so I think they threw everything they could find in the furnace to get that car. To get the weight down? No, to get the, make the thing go faster. Oh, okay, okay. But so then they got up, they made that change, that course change. And but I tell you, that, 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 why I didn't report that, it was a destroyer that pulled yeah. one of ours. Uh-huh. And it says, uh, you got to pick it up your Wow, skin. wow. So we got in into... Uh, the port, and there was not much gunfire at that particular time, but there was, the Tennessee was there, and uh, Phoenix was there, and, uh, and I, I don't know exactly how many, there, there was about 80 or 90 ships in that convoy that went in there, and there was some pretty big, big ships. Uh -huh. And uh, This is the Seventh Fleet. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they would, uh, it's, it's the bigger ships. I know the Tennessee was. We were right next to them, anchored, and they they would shoot into the in the land, and uh, they hear them explode. Mm -hmm. But before they did that, they would shoot a uh, uh, a shell, a flare in the air from the from the uh, shore. And then you could see where different uh, people were, that different Japanese were. Mm -hmm. And they could do a lot of shooting too from, uh, uh, and then uh, as soon as you seen that air, that flare go up, and then you could hear that, that uh, machine guns going. And, sure. Uh, and then, uh, and then uh, and during the day, most of the time, these, the, the Tennessee, the bigger ships would fire in, uh, in the shore, you don't know where they went, they did. 
because there was a, a Piper Cub type airplane that was flying over there and they would tell radio back to the Tennessee uh, how far off they were in their ship. So it was a yeah. interesting thing. Oh, Bob, now well, tell me about the incident that happened where you have the information from the log there. We're running short on time here. So what was the incident that led up to what, oh. what the log says? Okay, I, should I read this? Yeah, read what the log says. What's the date on it? Uh, this is the uh, January 12, 1945. Okay, what's it say? Now, up in here is just the basic things that uh, you got up and blah, 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 blah. But down into, uh, I'll see. Uh, I think you have okay. a circle down there. Yeah. Uh, you're probably uh, the general quarters were sounded. This is the one about noon. And then uh, uh, general quarters saying a convoy attack by enemy aircraft. Uh, changed course to 015. And average uh, RPM was 62.5. Now that don't mean anything to us people that don't. Uh, so at 2000, that, or 1600, that's, uh, uh, what time is that? That's uh, 12, uh, it's that's four. in the afternoon, that's mm -hmm. about 4 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Yep. As esteemed before reported, uh, okay, that was, uh, they give you some general information where they can down and wind the clocks and all that stuff. So, then at uh, 2000, uh, steaming as before, uh, they they uh, changed uh, they changed the uh, base course to zero 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 something. They put that in. Convoy attack by enemy aircraft. Uh, SSC notes uh, below uh, at sunset. That's what, what I thought was five or six o'clock. So then they after they darkened the ship. Convoy attack by enemy aircraft. Average. Uh, RPM was 62. Now, <coughs> I don't know. Just, just continue. That was, uh, that was our RPM, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know what that was. I, I don't. Uh, average RPM, that was. I was hoping you were just going to read the circled part about what yeah. happened. Oh, well, then uh, everything pressure and so on and so forth. The steam as, then it got 2400. It was steam as before. Uh, then they, okay, that's just changed officers on duty. Then it got down to the convoy attacked by six enemy aircraft, five planes shot down. Uh, this the, uh, vessel uh, contributed to the destroy of two of the enemy. That was us. That was that. This contributed to the destroying of two enemy aircraft? And the planes. And the paired planes. Okay, did you shoot down any of those five, Bob? We, we don't know. Of course, see, I was a sight setter on a three-inch gun. Uh -huh. And they would call me, uh, uh, they would fire the three-inch gun or whatever. And then, uh, as soon as I get uh, up two, down four, and, and then I'd say, and when I did that, I'd hit the guy on, on the back, and he, he would fire. I see. And then the, the officer of the deck, you say, down one, up two, or whatever. And then I'd do it, and then I'd do it again. And so, he, but you don't know. It's a kind of a team the, effort. The sky was black. Wow. With all those ships firing, you, it was dark out. It really was. Uh huh. And wow. so that was. Uh, wow. That was. Uh, how did you feel during that? Were you nervous? Yes, very, very nervous. Mm -hmm. And we spent. Uh, there was quite a line at the head, which is a toilet uh, for people to. Greater, but I oh. <laughs> there was a lot of them that uh, uh, did their duty before they got there. It was uh -huh. you get scared, you get real, real right, scared. right, right. Uh, it was, so that was the most combat you ever saw. That was your that scariest. Was a, that was a point, and that was um, well. You read the date there. Twenty fifth. Uh, uh huh. And so um, five out of the six planes were shot down, and we got two of them. And you got, okay, okay. And then, uh, 
the next day. That, so then, then that was it for that engagement, and then uh, what happened? And then we were steaming along before standard speed, nine knots. Six yeah, you don't need to read that. Yeah, right. we've we don't have a lot of time left, Bob. No. Um, let's see. We've got less than ten minutes. The gay and golf. That was where we. That was the. Uh, the what golf? The gay and. The gay and golf. That was okay. where the uh, the. Uh, where uh -huh. We went in as far as it. Okay, so uh, the rest of your time, then you just you just continued your duty of, of. Um, where did you get the fuel to refuel to fill your your tanks to refuel? Yeah, they would. Uh, the, there was new tankers, faster tankers. They would go back to Frisco or, or wherever and load up, and they would rendezvous with us out in uh -huh. the China Sea or wherever, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe at a port somewhere, mm -hmm. and they would refill us up. I and see. Then we would take off and fill the others up. Okay. And they would rendezvous with. Uh, other people out there. Okay. Other ships out there. Okay. So, but but there were uh, hundreds of ships in the Seventh Fleet, or dozens, or in the Seventh Fleet. Yeah. Oh God, there was. I, I don't know how many. But, yeah. Uh, a, a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. More than a hundred, I think. Much more than that. Uh huh. And um, how was the morale on your ship? Oh, we were we were good. See, I was on that ship. For two and a half years. Wow. I went aboard and I was the longest guy on that ship. Were you? Of course. Uh, I went aboard in, in, in October of 43 and I got off of it in March of 46. Wow. So, <laughs> uh, every time we got time for me to re 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 rotate, they changed it to another month. <laughs> so the attitude was, uh, after so long, the guys that were close to the time, we, we, we just knew we were never going to go home. And you just get... Uh, you get adjusted to that? Yeah, you, somehow you get... You get, uh, you get but did you, did you get any letters? Yeah, we got letters, but they've... It, it was, they couldn't find us a lot of Yeah, it's hard to on a ship. Uh, and uh, my, my address was San Francisco, uh, and I never was there. <laughs> and that, so that was kind of funny. Yeah. But, uh, and sometimes you would, uh, you'd get a, a letter newer than the ones that came later. Sometimes <laughs> they, they just Right. Get, they weren't in order. Necessarily. Yeah, they, were, they were mixed up a little bit. Yeah. Tell me, um, why had you chosen the Navy in the first place? What appealed to you about the Navy? Because a lot of my friends at home uh, went in the Navy and I thought possibly, in fact there was one that uh, uh, he got drafted. Uh -huh. And uh, that was kind of one that spurred me on to say, Mother, I'm going to go to join the Navy. Because he, he uh, was going and he went about oh maybe thirty days <coughs> no less than thirty days before I did mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we met a couple of times did you in boot camp nice and then there was some other guys that was that was really in the thick of it over in the, uh, the, the Philippines and we got to meet and go. He came aboard our ship, mm -hmm. and we visited and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. and things like that. But that, yeah, that's about all of yeah. people that you, you know. And then every time a ship would come alongside, and that was a lot, almost all of everybody would holler over, where are you from? Anybody from Michigan? Anybody from all that? Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And no the one ever was from Muskegon. <laughs> right, it was from Muskegon. <laughs> so, but that was uh, that was fun. That was quite a. Tell me about VJ Day. Oh, the, the, uh, yeah, I was uh, selected one way or another to go aboard, uh, to go to uh, Washington D.C. for a one-day visit to the, the Veterans uh, Memorial, the, the World War II. 
and I didn't know much about that, but then I got the information that you will, you had a luncheon or dinner, a nice dinner the night before, and you could have someone take you, or you could go yourself if you want. But I, I didn't like to drive at night. I don't. So my daughter took me, and we had this very nice lunch or dinner, and you got to introduce to the person that was going to be with you the next day. And her name was Sandy, <coughs> and uh, uh, she was a very nice uh, person. She was with me the next day from daylight until dark, and so that's nice. And we had a nice dinner. So then the next morning, <coughs> uh, my daughter took me to the airport. Uh, and that was five o'clock in the morning. We had to be there. Yeah. And then she couldn't stay. She had to leave. Right. And the only one who could stay there would be Sandy. That's what it was going to yeah. be with. Yeah. Went into the airport and they would give us breakfast. And they did some other things in there too. That. Uh -huh. So then we went uh, uh, went to the airport, got on the plane, and and went to uh, uh, Washington D.C. Yeah. I was hoping. I'm sorry. That's the honor flight. I was hoping you'd tell me about the end of the war, victory oh, oh. in Japan, VJ Day. Was oh. it victory in Japan? I wasn't in there. In you weren't on your Japan. ship when, when, when? I was on there when the bomb was dropped. I was on the ship. And the night, uh, I was on the, on the deck and it was dark. And another fellow and I was just on the ship, just giving gathering around, talking about things. And someone come running out of the uh, uh, radio shack part. He says, the war is over, the war is over, you know, it was, uh, and so we walked around to, it says, yeah, that just came over that the, the Japan surrendered. And of course, everyone wow. was, blah, blah, blah. wasn't real sure that that was the real. I see, weren't sure that the report was true. Yeah. Right. So the next day we found out uh, that it was true that they had surrendered. Uh -huh. And so a lot of the security uh, things that we had uh, had been using uh, were taken off. Now, like for instance, uh, at night uh, you darken the ship, and of course portholes were closed and so on and so forth. But then at night the portholes could be open and the lights could be on, and, uh, and because inside them, them barracks type thing. At night, when you close those portholes and everything, it was quite warm in there. <clears throat> so most of us, anyhow, would grab our mattress and take it out and, uh, and throw it on the, the deck or throw it on whatever and uh, sleep out there. Yeah, yeah. I always seem to sprinkle or something. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Good. So then um, you... Um, your your ship then went back to to um, how how did you get home? Well, then the uh, the word came when the war was over that the Andrew Dury was to go back to uh, Mobile, Alabama, and be his commission. So we uh, we had a little problem starting back. The intakes, the water intakes on the our ship, had gotten so full of barnacles that. Uh, we had to send divers over and clean them off, and then we took off. And, uh, okay. And we 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 average to have a, a, a mileage board on the, so you could look and see how far you went every day. Yep. And a lot of days where you didn't even go 100 miles. Wow. So, because we could only go, and then if the weather was bad, mm -hmm. you'd almost go nowhere. You mm -hmm. think you would, but. Uh, and then we, we started, we got back and we was running real low on fuel ourselves around the Johnson Island, then we thought. And so we uh, we made it into there and we got some fuel and then we went to the Panama Canal. And that takes pretty much a day to get through the, all the thing there. Mm -hmm. and then we went up to Mobile, Alabama and then uh, decommissioned the, okay. took all the guns off and everything. And then, okay. So, so then they sent the, a lot of guys went home, and then I had five, oh, five guys. I, being a coxswain, I was, uh, even though I had, they didn't have any retirement, I had a right arm, 
reading. And your right arm reading is higher than the left arm reading. I see. So anyhow, being a coxswain isn't a, a big deal, but if it was a, a, a storeman or a cook or something, it was the same rate. It is reading would outrage it. So okay. then we got we got everything out, and then we we took the ship up the river uh, and pulled it into a little canal type thing and just rammed it up on the shore and just left it there. Okay. We all got there was there was really just a few of us got got back at the rear of the ship, got aboard a, a small motorboat and took us to uh, the bus station downtown Okay. in uh, Mobile, Alabama. Home from there, okay. Okay, well we're out of tape.